Why is the right side of the body controlled by the left side of the brain and the left side of the body is controlled by the right side of the brain? Stay tuned. Before we get started, subscribe to Psy vs. Psy, support your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you about contralateral control in the brain. There's something weird that happens in your brain. No, not that. What, what the, or that. Okay, I don't wanna watch, but I can't look away. Okay, would you stop that already? Now, as I was saying, what's weird is that the nerve fibers from the left side of the body cross over and are controlled by the right side of the brain, while the right side of the body is largely controlled from the left side of the brain. This is called contralateral, meaning opposite sides. The same side would be ipsilateral. Even the visual field that you can see in each eye gets divided in half and crosses over to the contralateral side, which gets processed by the opposite side of the brain. The spot where those nerves cross from the eyes is called the optic chiasm because it looks like an X or the Greek letter chi. Sometimes crossing of this type is called decussation. Another place that decussation happens is where the medulla, part of the brainstem, connects to the spinal cord. And there are some other areas too. No one really knows why this happens, which means we get to speculate wildly. So I thought I would highlight a few of the cool ideas that have been advanced about why this happens. It isn't something that has received a lot of attention, and most people don't think about it much, but it seems really weird if you think about it. In animals like invertebrates that evolved their central nervous system more or less independently from us, decussation does happen, but far less often. So why might this be? Contralateral organization of the brain was discovered at least as early as Hippocrates, who lived from 460 to 380 BCE. There's a long history since then of tracing the areas where decussation happens, and it wasn't until 1898 that an answer was proposed by the famous neuroanatomist Santiago Ramon y Cajal. If you're unfamiliar with him or his work, you should check out some of his drawings, which are incredibly detailed and accurate and are still relevant today. In fact, some of his drawings have been featured in art exhibits. Very cool. Anyway, Ramon y Cajal's explanation hinged upon the eyes. Like many lenses, the lenses of your eye focus the light but also flip it upside down. If you're an animal that uses the eyes on the sides to get a panoramic view of your environment, if the image is wired to the ipsilateral sides of the brain, then when the rotation happens, the two images won't match up. One way to correct this so you can combine the images together properly is to wire the eyes to the contralateral sides of the brain. Then when you put the images together, they fit perfectly. Okay, that explains the eyes, but what about the rest of the body? Well, the other senses have to integrate together to form a representation of the world. Therefore, it makes sense that the other senses, such as touch and motor movement, would need to cross over so that they could be matched to the visual image. It's almost like your whole brain is installed upside down. And all that's just to deal with the upside down images coming in from your eyes. But there are some issues with this explanation. For example, why wouldn't the brain just interpret the image correctly? Nothing says that the image has to stay in the form of that image in the brain. In fact, there have been patients who reportedly only have the ipsilateral connections from the eyes and they managed to interpret the visual field correctly. So are there any other explanations that might work? Yes, a second explanation was put forward by Sarnat and Nesky in 1974. Their argument was that if you sense a threat on your left side, you should reflexively contract the muscles on the right side to move away from it quickly. In this way, contralaterally wired organisms would have an adaptive advantage. But as mentioned, invertebrates tend to solve this problem without crossing sides, so maybe that's not the strongest idea. The body plan of invertebrates leads to another interesting theory with a twist, literally. You see, invertebrates have a brain in a similar place to ours in the head above the mouth, but the nerve fibers then cross down along the bottom center of the body. 
The gut is along the back. If you've ever deveined a shrimp, you were removing its digestive tract. The heart is somewhere in between. If you keep the head still but rotate the body of a vertebrate, it will match the layout of invertebrates except for the head. What if decussation occurs as a byproduct left over from an early vertebrate ancestor that adapted to twist its body around so down is up and up is down? In fact, the genes associated with controlling the body development support this idea. Genes that control the development of the back or dorsal side of vertebrates are found to control the ventral side or the front of invertebrates. There are many invertebrate species that, to some degree or another, exhibit twisting of body segments during development. So that adds plausibility to this idea. The way the nerve fibers twist in the optic chiasm, rather than just crossing over to the other side in a straight line, also lends credence to this hypothesis. Finally, I'll give you one more explanation from Whitehead and Banihani from 2014 that centers around possible injury and escape from predators. The idea goes like this. If you encounter danger and get injured, it's most likely going to be affecting one side of the body or the other, meaning both your brain and body would be injured on the same side. As the logic goes, it's easier to control an injured body with a healthy brain and use an injured brain to control a healthy body than it would be to catastrophically lose function in both brain and body on one side. This would provide a selective advantage for contralaterally wired organisms. I like this mystery of contralateral organization of the forebrain. It shows how we still don't have answers to really basic questions in psychology and neuroscience. Which theory do you think is best? And do you have your own ideas? Leave a comment. Did you like this video? Use the left side of your brain to control your right hand to press the like button. While you're there, subscribe to get more videos on the science of psychology. And until next time, keep thinking. Let's twist again, like we did 500 million years ago. Come on, let's twist again. Like we did over the last 500 some odd million years.